Here at the top of the nine o'clock hour, we are going to welcome to the program uh, Colonel Robert, excuse me, Colonel Lee Ellis to uh, what's happening here on 600 WMT. And uh, it's, it, you've got an interesting background, Colonel Ellis. Uh, you have the unfortunate circumstance of a life-changing event as a POW for over five years at uh, the Hanoi Hilton. And you recently went back to Vietnam with your wife, Mary, to tour the site of your pre You were there for over five years, and, and uh, thankfully, you know, you got out, you are in one piece, and you're going to be coming to Cedar Rapids to talk to a group of Rockwell Collins employees and contractors, and that's going to be tomorrow night. So we're happy to be able to welcome you to not only the program, but what's happening here in 600 WMT and Rockwell Collins coming up tomorrow. Colonel, how are you today? Doing well, Doug. Thank you. Good. I'm glad to have you on the program today. Uh, what you? It's interesting because May is a National Military Appreciation Month, and uh, part of what you're going to be talking about is what that is all about. As a POW, as a vet, what does the National Military uh, Appreciation Month mean to you? Well, I think it's important. It's leading up to uh, Memorial Day at the end of the month, but during the month we're just recognizing the military and their commitment, you know, our military has been at war now for 12, 13 years. Yeah. And cons- constantly, and I know people that have been over three, four, five, even six times to, to the combat zone doing duty over there. And so the rotations that they've been through, it's just an extraordinary commitment. I remember once when uh, we had a speaker in, we ha- I was working as a senior manager of a large military leadership school, and we had a speaker, and he said, well, Here's the thing to remember, folks. When you when you work as part of the military, you don't work for General Mills or General Motors. You right. work for generals that give orders that can be life or death. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Colonel Ellis, something else to be to you know to to be thinking about as well is you start thinking about the number of especially having been at war for so long, so many people, multiple tours and deployments. Uh, the the military suicide rate is skyrocketing, just jumping mm-hmm. through the roof. Uh, and, and that's something, is it a different soldier? Is it a different time? Or what is going on? Is this comparable to what you recall coming back from Vietnam? Well, for the POWs, we had actually had two years at the end of the war. The treatment got better. We had two years to kind of decompress and to prepare ourselves for coming home. Mm-hmm. Uh, two years of better treatment. So, the guys that are in the war today, you know, they're fighting and their buddies are dying right and left. And then 24 hours later, they're sitting down at the dinner table with a family who have no idea and they feel out of place. They feel disconnected from their buddies who are still fighting. And they know that the people around the table don't understand. But I think there's one other issue here. It is a different culture. Um, young people have not, uh, they don't have the resilience today. And I don't mean this to be critical because we have. I'd say they're as fine as soldiers and maybe better than we've ever had. Mm -hmm. But due to the conditions in our culture, uh, you can go to any university and ask them what's the biggest challenge they have for the dean of students or with their students, and most of them are going to say it's mental health. Right. Our people don't have much resilience. They get a bad grade and have to go to counseling. Mm -hmm. So it's... uh, the resilience in our younger population is just not what it used to be. It's interesting. Uh, we're talking with Colonel Lee Ellis, who is a uh, retired veteran, and uh, he was a POW in, in Vietnam. He's going to be at Rockwell Collins tomorrow talking with both uh, both uh, staff members over there as well as uh, suppliers. I believe it's part of the supplier conference. Uh, in any case, it's what he's talking about that's much more important than, who, than, than whom he's speaking with. Because, interestingly, uh, National Military Appreciation Month coincides with National Mental Health Awareness Month. It's it. You and I did not talk about this beforehand, but I've been talking to folks during May, and we just sort of picked up this subject. And, and I don't think that it's invalid at all what you said about uh, the resilience of, of younger people. And uh, it, I don't think that people see that as an insult at all, because you have had the kind of an experience that, that few others have had. What was it like for you to go back to Vietnam with your wife uh, to the location where you had been uh, you had been imprisoned? Well, you know, I, everyone kept saying, well, what's it going to be like? What are your, you know, what are your feelings? What are you feeling about it? And I said, I don't know yet. I have to go and see. Right. Uh, and, you know, I think I was so glad that my wife was with me because 
you know, to be uh, there alone would be, always to be alone as a POW was a scary thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she were, just having her there reminded me that I was free and had been for more than 40 years. But going in there, uh, it was depressing. It was heavy. Uh, realizing that I had been locked up in that place for so long. And then as we got into the area where their museum reflecting the American experience there with the POWs of American experience, it was uh, mostly all propaganda lies about how well they treated us yeah. and, and uh, how terribly uh, we bombed their hospitals and schools, which was just a lie, you know. We never did that intentionally. There, I'm sure there were a few stray bombs that did. So that really got my got me cooking about lies and propaganda, and so I was already bothered by that. I always have been because we had five and a half years of it there. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and, but here's the good news. The good news is that the Vietnamese people are more prosperous every day. Uh, they have a market economy that's growing under the communist frame. The communists there are basically like mafia, taking their cut off the top and controlling the media. But uh, the people are getting more money, more freedom, and uh, they like Americans very much. They don't like the communists very much. They don't like Russians and Chinese very much, and they like us. So I feel like we're winning that war every day. Speaking with Colonel Lee Ellis, who is an Atlanta-based leadership consultant, he was a POW for over five years, along with such uh, American heroes as Senator John McCain, Admiral Denton. He's going to be speaking with employees of Rockwell Collins tomorrow night uh, at the Marriott as part of an event that they, they have here coming up, and we're pleased to have him on the program today. You know, you brought up something interesting, Colonel Ellis. Uh, What's happening right now, this has got to be interesting for you, is that you have these these, um, riots in the streets of Vietnam as Vietnam is clashing with China over sea rights and property rights out into the sea. I mean, this has to be sort of 40 years later. They're coming back more than full circle now, and they're trying to fight with communist China in order to get what they consider their property back. Yeah, you know, they had a war with China about two or three years after we pulled out, after all Americans were pulled out. Mm -hmm. They had a war up on the border there with China, and so China and the Vietnamese have never been great friends. They've been uh, uh, allies because of the communists that ran both of the countries. Right. They've never been great friends, and, uh, you know, they've been fighting over the islands near Vietnam. They've, now they're over the oil rights. And obviously China wants to push down there, and they're the big boy on the street down there, and it wants to push down and get a hold of those oil rights because they need the oil. And the Vietnamese are pretty feisty about it, pushing back. And I read where the Vietnamese government is kind of trying to hold down the riots a little bit. They didn't want to have to get the Chinese too riled up. Yeah, exactly. And that was one of the top stories they, they were talking. In fact, we'll talk about it later on in my program here and what's happening as well here on 600 WMT. Leading with Honor is the name of your award-winning book, Colonel Lee Ellis, uh, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. He's going to be here in Cedar Rapids sharing his POW story as well as his personal impressions about touring modern-day Hanoi. Uh, with Rockwell Collins employees coming up tomorrow. I'd be remiss, Colonel, if I didn't uh, bring into this uh, interview, uh, especially talking about leadership lessons, the recent revelations of the ongoing scandal now with VA hospitals, not just in Phoenix, but starting to pop up all over the country. Um, And I'm just going to leave it wide open for you to tell us what your thoughts and feelings are on that. Well, here's the thing. I know there are a lot of good people that work for the VA, uh, that are trying to do the right thing, that are dedicated to serving our men and women who've served our country. But the problem, the problem is the VA is a huge government bureaucracy. Now, in government bureaucracies, the opportunity to have, hold people accountable is just very, very difficult to hold anybody accountable. In fact, as a saying it says, it's more likely you would, if you were a supervisor or a manager in the VA, it's more likely you'd die of a heart attack at work and be successful in firing an employee. I mean, literally. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) Because it's just impossible to uh, hold people accountable and uh, to replace people that aren't doing their job and to get, you know, to to promote and celebrate the people who are doing a good job. So it's like a lot of our, we've seen this in several areas, I think, where we have government, civil service people that are not accountable, and then when management tries to hold them accountable, uh, that doesn't work, or just kind of, 
it just kind of slithers away and nothing ever happens. So that's a big problem there. And the other part is that Congress has not fully funded the VA to the degree that they probably need with a high influx of people from a long, long war, you know, in Southwest Asia. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of pieces. But it's also true that the VA has not been very accountable probably in managing their monies in lots of areas. And then, you know, you, you there's an old saying, I think the former CEO at IBM said, you can expect what you inspect. Well, they were inspecting numbers, and so people gave them the numbers they wanted. They weren't inspecting health care to make sure they were providing health care. They were inspecting numbers of people seen and on the short lists and all that. And you get what you uh, you get what you look for. That's a very good, Paul, very good points. Uh, it's uh, Colonel Lee Ellis who is with us here and what's happening. Colonel, thank you so much for your time here and what's happening. Hope you have a safe trip from uh, Atlanta up to the Cedar Rapids metro area and enjoy your time with Rockwell Collins employees tomorrow. Hey, Doug, thank you so much. I love Iowa, love the Iowa people. I always enjoy coming there, and I come as often as I can. Thanks oh, so much. Wonderful. Take care. Colonel Lee Ellis is the author of a book called uh, Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons uh, from the Hanoi Hilton. He's a former POW, and uh, he was in Hanoi. He recently went back to Hanoi 40 years later, and he'll be talking about his impressions from that trip as well as leadership lessons during National Military Appreciation Month uh, when he's speaking with...